Hello aviators, welcome to my instrument rating video series. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, bringing you honest experience, reviews, training tips that will help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, if you're new here, the purpose of this video series is to bring you free, in-depth instrument ground school training for you instrument pilots. This is the same exact training and instructions that I normally give to my students. And if you're one of my students that are watching, yes, you can use this as a review because this is literally the same exact instructions that I give in the same exact way. Um, and it has been proven to work. So without further ado, let's jump right into the training. Hey instrument pilots, welcome to session number 10. We're going to be talking about procedure turns. Now, procedure turns are very easy. All it is is a fancy procedure of turning your aircraft around to line you up with the final approach. And we're going to look at here. So this is where the procedure turn is going to start. This is the top down plan view. This is the, the side view for the profile. And so let's say you're coming from you're coming to here. Your, the procedure turn is going to start right here at a fix. Okay, so it's going to start at the fix. Now, once you're at the fix, you're going to be going to this heading, going to on the radio for 269. Now, you're going to be going out there. Now, as long as you stay within 10 nautical miles. Now, the now the limitation of how far you can go out is normally on the on the profile view. So, as long as we're within 10 nautical, let, let's say 10 nautical miles is right here. It's a big radius. It goes all the way around. So, we can fly out. We can actually start our turn here. We can start a turn here, we can start a turn here, we can start a turn here, as long as we're turning on the protected side, which is going uh, southwest. And how do we know that? Because there's a little bar of error right here. This is identifying the protected side. And this may seem a little similar to the holding video that we just did in the last session. If you didn't see that, I'll put a link up, the, up ahead for you guys. Um, so this is the protected side so up here again again this is the unprotected side there could be mountains over here this is the danger zone as i was mentioning in the previous video uh could be noise abatement antennas whatnot obstacles who knows but anyway what they want you to do is they want you to fly 269 out here and then you can actually do a left turn now you can when you do turn you can turn to a heading of 224 fly out there for one minute and then you can continue on oh, let me get my other pen get my other marker and then you can continue on so here we go we're coming from here we're coming from here we're coming from here doesn't matter as long as when once we're here then we fly this heading which is 269 269 269 269 okay cool now we're going to go ahead and do our procedure turn our u-turn so let's go do a left turn to 224 for one minute all right one minute's up and now we're going to turn back around and we're going to be heading to 44 zero four four we're going to go until until we intercept the final approach course which is zero eight nine now while you are flying in this direction you can actually start descending from whatever altitude that you may be at notice there's no there's no altitude up here to start with so you can be at let's say you can be at uh, five thousand feet you can be at three thousand feet or you can be at uh, let's say i don't know two thousand feet so two thousand feet so once you go here, you can actually start descending down to the final approach altitude, which is in this case, 1600 feet, which is uh, shown on the profile view. So once you're at 1600 feet, uh, and then you're intercept, you're intercepted with the final approach course, that is where your final approach fix is at. Notice on the, on the profile view, there's no final approach fix. Like where's, where's the final approach fix? The reason why they didn't put one in there is because let's say you're flying and a Cessna 90 knots versus a, uh, a, a King Air that flies much, much faster. So let's say that they're coming in and they have to fly a little bit further out here. And let's say they, they don't start their procedure turn until they're way out here. Then they can turn to 244 for one minute or, or, whatever, they, they, or whatever they do. Then they'll do their U-turn, uh, uh, 044. And then when they finally intercept the, uh, the final approach fix, they could still be at, let's say, uh, 3,000 feet right here. Let's say, yes, they are in, they're coming inbound, but they're not at the altitude yet, so they're technically not at the final approach fix yet. Once they're at 1,600 feet, let's say right here, they're at 3,000, they're going inbound, but let's say they're not, they're not at 1,600 until like maybe right there. So now that is where their final approach fix is. Let me just draw the little Maltese cars here. So that's for our little King Air. 
for our Cessnas, we may not have to drive. We know we might not have to fly away out here. So when we get when we get to this uh, our fix, we're gonna go out here and then we're gonna do our U-turn. And then by the time we are at 1,600 feet, we may be right here. So the final approach fixes can vary, and that's the very reason why they're not they're not identified on here anywhere because they can change depending on what aircraft that you're flying. So this is the top down view. Now let's go down to the the uh, the profile view. Again, same thing. I kind of lined these up the best I could. So this is the here's here's the here's the fix right here. I'll just draw a line right down there. All right, so we are flying along. We're flying along, flying along, flying along. As soon as we're over the fix, that's when you can either start descending um, at a, at heading two six nine. So heading two six nine, two six nine, two six nine, and then right about let's say right about here, we want to start our U turn. So we can do our U turn. You do our U turn, and we're still descending. We're still descending. We're going now. We're heading to heading uh, zero four four. As soon as we're on the final approach fix. And then we're back lined up with the runway. We're at 1,600 feet. That is where our final approach final approach fix is. Let's say we are over here and we're not at 1,600 feet yet. Now we're at 1,600 feet. This is the uh, final approach fix, and we can just go ahead and start descending to our minimums, whatever our minimum, uh, whatever our MDA is. Another special thing about the procedure turn: you don't necessarily have to turn to heading. Uh, 224 for your procedure turn. You can actually, you can fly like this if you want. You can do a loop-de-loop, -loop, you can do like this. You can do a loop-de-loop -loop as long as you, you're descending back to your altitude and then you find the approach, uh, you're on the final approach course and you're at 600 feet, there is your final approach course and then you can just fly in just like normal. You don't necessarily have to fly this exact pattern. Now, what they are concerned about is if you, whatever you're going to do, if you are going to do these little loop-to-loop -loop crazy little maneuvers, as long as you're on the protected side, identified by this little bar, yeah, you're absolutely fine. And as long as you are staying within 10 nautical miles, you're absolutely fine. All right, so for you eagle eyes out there, you might be able to recognize this procedure turn. This is actually the procedure turn for the VOR and for Niner right in Melbourne. Uh, if you want to actually look this up on ForeFlight or Sky Vector, you can find it on, um, let's say it is KMLB, and it's the VOR approach for Niner Right. Uh, disclaimer, don't use this as navigational purposes in case something changes and, well, I, I shot the approach because I was watching this YouTube video and I busted my minimums, like really? So just, I uh, just gotta say it. Anyway, so side view coming up here. Again, this altitude can be 3,000. You could be at 5,000 and whatever altitude you could be at, whatever. Once, you're, once you cross, once you're over here, you're gonna start your descent, start your descent. Here is your loop-de-loop-de-loop-de-loops, what you're doing right here. Or you can, do, you can be doing your, your turn. As long as you're within 10 nautical miles, and now you're gonna come back in here. Now you are intercepted with the with the final approach course, which is 089. You're heading 089 and you're at 1600 feet. If you have both of those, well then hey, you're at your final approach fix. Guess what you can start doing? You can go ahead and start descending to your MDA. Now you're gonna stay at your MDA until you're until uh, you're over the over the VOR, and then of course then that's when you go miss and you commence your uh, missed approach instructions. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about the procedure turn during a uh, instrument approach, or an RNAV, or an ILS, or whatnot. Let's again, it's a reversal, right? So let's say we are coming from this way. This should very, this should look familiar. Um, it is on one of my sessions. I can't remember the number right now, but I did go over uh, approaches. I'll put that link up there if you missed that one. But anyway, let's say if we're coming from this direction or this direction, you fly to this fix, which is nerd. I just made this, this up completely. Uh, uh, so you fly into this fix, and then what you're gonna be doing is the procedure turn. Now, one thing I did miss is I forgot to put the little arrows on here. Normally I have little arrows right there here to tell you the direction of the uh, procedure turn slash hold. You may hear of, you know, hold in lieu of the approach or holding in lieu of as you're flying to this fix, you're gonna enter this holding pattern 
based off of what you learned in the last video on the holdings, you're gonna enter this holding pattern no matter what direction you're gonna to go to and then you're gonna be holding in this until you're clear to proceed and then you're gonna go ahead and go on the, uh, do, do, do your approach, do the rest of your approach. Now, um, so let's say, first of all, we're gonna be coming in from this way. So if we're coming in this way, we're gonna be doing a parallel approach because we're gonna fly to the fix and then we're gonna do our course, course reversal. So this is how we do our reversal. So we're gonna go this way and then for one minute, so hitting 260 and then we're gonna do our, our uh, parallel entry and then boom. Once we're here, then we can continue on for the approach. Now, if you're holding in lieu, what you're gonna do, you're gonna do the same exact thing. You're gonna come up here, you're gonna do your parallel entry, you're gonna do your loop around and then you're going to do your timed approach. Or is it a timed approach? Watch for these little uh, uh, nautical mile markers right here. If you have a line right there with a little four NM, that means it's a distance hold. It's a four nautical mile legs. So once you are uh, in, the, once you're a beam the fix, then from there you're gonna fly up. So you're gonna fly two six zero for four nautical miles before turning back inbound. Another thing you can notice too is notice the. Uh, this heading does not line up with this heading. That can be because there's some noise abatement areas. Again, they don't always line up with the final approach uh, fix headings. Uh, so I actually did that on purpose because when I first seen that, I was like, wait a minute, is that is that right? So uh, so expect to see that on some approach plates. Uh, again, the, the altitudes are right here too. So hold, so you can actually do this hold from between 5,000 and 3,000 feet. Um, if you can also see something like uh, this right here, so you can do this hold at 10,000 feet as long as you're not below 3,000. Oh, sorry, there we go. As long as you're not below 3,000 feet, then, then you're fine. But in this case, we'll just leave it as it was. So there. Um, or they could tell you, hey, while you're in the hole, go ahead and descend down to 3,000, which you can do. So once you're in the hole, let's say we're coming from this way, we're at 5,000 feet. We're at 5,000 feet, we're coming in now, we're gonna go right to the hold. What kind of hold entry do you think this one's gonna be? If you said teardrop, you're absolutely correct. So you're gonna do a teardrop. Again, remember our LARS. So we're gonna do, a, we're gonna apply our LARS. We're gonna fly out here for one minute and then we're gonna do our teardrop entry and then we're gonna join the hold. Um, again, if it's hold and lube, then we're gonna keep on holding. If not, then we're gonna go, once we're established, then we're just gonna go ahead and go and then do our normal approach. Now, uh, another thing that, that I did not go over in the last video, which I kind of wish I did, which was the uh, missed approach. So missed approach instructions normally have you uh, on, the, on the top down view, you'll normally have this dashed line and then you'll have another little holding uh, pattern right here. Uh, so what this is, is you're gonna come in here and it's exactly like this. Here's your fix that you're gonna be flying to and then once you're flying two, you're gonna enter the hold. And if you can see really, if you can kind of make those, make these little arrows out, you can kind of see that the track, that the racetrack holding pattern is going this way. So if you're coming this way, what kind of hold, what kind of entry do you think you're gonna be doing? Well, you could be doing a parallel hold. So you're gonna be coming in here. Again, same thing applies. Once you're there, you're gonna be flying out here, 270, parallel to the, to the inbound course for one minute. Once you're there, then you're gonna do your your procedure turn around and then you're gonna to fly to the fix and then you're gonna start your one minute uh, legs. Or is it? Again, you notice this little four nautical mile here with a little line. So even this missed approach hold is also gonna be four nautical mile legs. And lastly, we have these up here. Now those are, these are normally your MSAs, your minimum safe altitudes. Normally they go out uh, from the, uh, either the final approach fix or they, they pick a, a, a specific fix. That they, that they do a radius out of, let's say 30 miles or 10 miles or whatnot, and they put a minimum safe altitude in a box right here. So, and if it's, if it's, uh, if there's mountains over here, there's no mountains over here, then these altitudes are gonna actually change. The minimum safe altitudes are gonna change. So they're actually going to, so some you'll see a circle. You'll see MSA, and you'll see what the fix is, and you'll have a, I don't know, 5,000, feet or whatever so and so 30 miles from that fix uh, if you're within here don't go below 30 uh, don't go don't go below 5,000 feet unless you're on the approach and then you can just go from there but what I what I really want to pay attention to is this right here you'll see no 
PT, which means no procedure term. So what this is saying is if I'm coming anywhere from, from 0 through 0 to 210, anywhere from this direction, there's no procedure term. Why don't you think there's a procedure term? Well, the procedure term again is to turn you around. Well, you don't need to turn around because you're already coming from this way. So you fly to the fix and you just keep on going. There's no need to do a procedure turn. Now, even though it does say no procedure turn, does not necessarily mean that you cannot do a procedure turn. You can do a procedure turn. Um, however, if you are going to do a procedure turn, if you're going to do a hold in lieu of the procedure turn, you must contact ATC or let them know or approach, let them know that you're going to be doing it before you actually do it. Don't just come over here and then just start holding without telling anybody. Um, so even though it does say no PT, you can do one, just let somebody know, but it doesn't make any sense to do a procedure turn if you are coming from anywhere from this direction. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay, Instrument Palace, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell for procedure turns. If you want more information, then go ahead and visit the uh, AIM. If you have the 2020 version, look on paragraph 549, and that will give you all the information, all the little nitty gritty details, anything that you feel that I may have missed. Um, if you want me to explain something a little bit more in detail, let me know, put them in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep flying, keep learning, and always have fun. I'll see you guys in session 11.